Chippingham man dies in a fire, leaving neighbors in shock. And the shooting death of a visitor to the Bahamas sparks feedback from the foreign press. The Bahamas Tonight starts now. Now in HD. Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Topping the news, a house fire goes up in flames, leaving its sole occupant dead. Neighbors identify the victim as Kevin Young, also known as Showtime. The 59-year-old was found in a bedroom after fire officials pried open the front door to the home on Eden Street in Shippingham just before 10 o'clock last night. Our Clint Watson has the story. It's the clashing sound of a gurney being loaded into a mortician's van, carrying the remains of a 59-year-old man who lost his life as flames engulfed his residence. The tragic night unfolded in the Chippingham community Friday, shortly before 10 p.m. Fire Chief Walter Evans telling ZNS News what they encountered when his team of firefighters arrived. Met heavy smoke billowing from a single-story concrete structure along with flames. Fire suppression officers entered the facility and they extinguished the blaze and shortly after extinguishing the blaze, firefighters met the lifeless body of a male found in a bedroom. Young was found by firefighters sitting in a chair dead. On Saturday, our news team went back to the area with the fire department. We also learned that there was no electricity supplied to the home prior to the fire. Nearby residents were shocked to learn of Kevin Young's death. And I saw the flames you know, bellowing from out the peak of the roof there. And so I tried to call uh, 911. We couldn't get through, so but someone was able to get through. And uh, after that, you know, a couple of people was trying to you know, hose, trying to hose the place down, and fellow was trying to get in. And as he tried to get in, the flames, you know, gushed out at, at him. And he went through the back, tried again, but he couldn't get, he couldn't get inside. So we, because I assumed he wasn't even there, because because I spoke to him mostly about an hour before, because I had some money for him and I gave it to him, and he went. So I assumed he was still out. But later on, when they check. I see the bus and everything came in and after that they check and I found out from someone that, that someone was inside. This is going, we're just driving to go to the practice. And look, I see just now, I see the snow showtime house. I just still can't believe it, you know, nobody tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. I just was driving and see the, see the house in very bad condition. That's sad. Showtime was a very helpful man. He used to come and clean around everybody's yard and stuff. And he used to sing a lot on karaoke out by the Awaki and stuff like that, but he's a very nice man. Superintendent Evans and his team have become all too familiar with the sometimes nonchalant approach and lack of consideration that many residents take when it comes to ensuring their homes are safe proof against fires or have the necessary detectors and extinguishers on hand. He offered this advice. We want to encourage members of the public just to pay close attention to the environment in every respect, ensure that the buildings are properly um, secured, ensure that the buildings do have smoke detectors and also to in regard to persons being able to evacuate. We want to ensure that persons are able to make their way out in the event of any incidents taking place. Now investigations into this latest tragedy continue as to seek to determine how the fire started. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Meantime, police need your help in solving a shooting case which has left a man in hospital. Police haven't said much about the incident except that the victim was walking in the vicinity of Florida court just before 3 o'clock Friday when he was shot to the leg. He was taken to hospital where he's detained in stable condition as investigations continue. The family of British tourist Edgar Dart, who was shot dead by armed robbers in that home invasion in Grand Bahama last week, have spoken to international media about the horrifying incident. Arkandino Knowles has been following the story and has more from a cousin of the victim. Family members of 56-year-old Edgar Dart have described to the international media the horrific events that led to his tragic death during what local authorities say was a home invasion in Emerald Bay, Grand Bahama this past week. The British Broadcasting Corporation, the Daily Mail and the UK Mirror have all picked up the story. In an interview with the Mirror, Michael Dart, who's the cousin of the victim, said what's worse is the fact that Edgar had just buried his father, Colin, a year earlier. 
The Mirror reports that 56-year-old Dart was gunned down as he protected his elderly mother Joy and other members of his family from three masked men armed with a gun and machetes. He further told the Mirror that the victim's 13-year-old son George was tied up and forced to watch his father being gunned down during the armed raid along with other family members. The website goes on to say that the machete-wielding gang threatened George and five other relatives after bursting into the house at 7 a.m. on Tuesday. The rest of the family, the mayor reports, were tied up and watched in horror as Mr. Dard lay dying while the raiders ransacked the house. He said he was really shocked to hear that there have been at least eight murders in the Bahamas this year, calling it, quote, such a sleepy, peaceful place. The Daily Mail quoted Mr. Dard's brother saying, quote, the police report on the killing is very scant and that crime is on the increase on the island and that police do not want such matters reported for fear it will damage the tourism industry. But Assistant Commissioner of Police Emmerich Seymour, who has oversight of the Northern Bahamas, says certain aspects of a case are not revealed for the sake of not compromising an investigation. At the end of the day, when we take the matter to the court, we will have a clear-cut case. In, and that's all, we, that's all we're seeking to do. And so as the investigation progresses, we will be bringing members of the public and the wider community up to date on where we are. During that phone interview on Saturday, the Assistant Commissioner also had this to say about any possible cover-ups. We are not in the business of covering up anything. Anything that we feel the members of the public has a right to know, of course, we will bring that to their attention. We, we will let, let them know. If we don't, the truth eventually will come out. All we have is our credibility and integrity to protect as leaders of this organization. And we will not compromise that for anything or anyone. Now, the story of Edgar's death has also been shared on Jim Walker's Cruise Law News website, which has also put up a warning for cruise passengers traveling to the Bahamas. In the meantime, the Dart family says it remains in shock. Kindino Knowles, ZNS Network News. Six males are being questioned by police in connection with a spate of robberies. We're told the men were taken into custody just after 8 o'clock last night. Officers acting on intelligence went to 3rd Street Coconut Grove, where they arrested the men for questioning in reference to several armed robberies. Police haven't said which robberies the men may be connected to. Meantime, police are requesting the public's help in solving several armed robberies involving cell phones. Police say the first incident happened just before 11 o'clock Friday morning when a man armed with a handgun robbed a Robinson Road business of two cellular phones before fleeing on a bicycle. Two men armed with shotguns also robbed a man walking on Hampton Street last night of his cell phone, jewelry and cash before also fleeing on foot. About three hours later, police say three men armed with a handgun robbed a Another man walking on burial ground corner of his cell phone and cash and fled the scene on foot. Another suspect armed with a handgun robbed a man of his cell phone and cash in front of a residence on Johnston Avenue, Stapleton Gardens, around 3 o'clock this morning. Now, police say the culprits there got away in a gray-colored vehicle. The robberies continued with a gunman robbing a supermarket on East Street and Robinson Road of an undetermined amount of money before fleeing on a bicycle. While BTC is still trying to determine the cause of that hours-long outage two weeks ago, officials are now investigating another service disruption this weekend. Candino Knowles spoke with a senior executive who says the company has now commissioned an audit of its network. If you had problems making or receiving calls, text messages or other data services yesterday, then you were not alone. The Bahamas Telecommunications Company is reporting another disruption in its mobile network yesterday, the second such incident in about two weeks. Yesterday around 9 a.m., somewhere just, just right around 10 minutes to 8.50 to about 9.24, we did have an element of our network on our MSC that, that went down. Um, fortunately for us, we were able to rectify the problem in just over an hour. Uh, we want to apologize certainly for that. It has no relationship to what happened before. Just an unfortunate coincidence that it happened so soon. And BTC Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing, Marlon Johnson, says the company is now in troubleshoot mode. But we've been mandated and tasked to ensure by our board that these things do not happen. And of course, we understand that you will have an outage every now and again because things do happen. But our ambition is to minimize them. So we are doing the full root cause analysis and we will, again, advise customers as to our, our plans for making sure we have a fully resilient, fully redundant network across all elements. In fact, this recent outage, as well as that hours-long disruption two weekends ago, has prompted the company to launch an audit into its brand new 4G network in an effort to strengthen its resiliency. You will hear us coming and talking about some of the further investments we're making at the plant. 
to show that where we can we create redundant systems, where we can make them redundant, then we try to make them as resilient as possible so they have multiple backups that you know we can, if it goes down, we can restore them in a matter of minutes as opposed to hours or longer. Johnson says BTC technicians, with help from outside consultants, will look at the network from end to end to make sure that it represents a best-in-class operator. They will also present final recommendations on how BTC can make specific elements more resilient and what needs to be done from a process and management standpoint to ensure an optimal network. And while BTC is all about compensating customers, as we saw with its $1.7 million free minutes give back and text-to-win promotion, the senior executive explains that he hopes customers will appreciate that there are some things the company just cannot control. The truth of the matter is simple. Networks do go down. There is, there is no network in the world that doesn't go down from time to time. But the challenge for operators is to make sure that that is as infrequent. It should be a very rare event um, when something like that happens. And so that's what we do. And the way that we do that is that there are certain elements we make redundant. So if something goes... Johnson says a report on the cause of both outages is forthcoming. Kendino Nolds, ZNS Network News. Well, still ahead tonight, a religious leader is laid to rest and praise for his works in the church and community. That's after the break.